Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Conservative Nerd. How you guys doing? It's early. Uh, figured out to do morning videos. Uh, I'm going to do my reviews for yesterday. Uh, I read uh, a bunch of stuff, so uh, uh, if it's great, I give it a great. If it's good, if it's a good. If it's okay to fair, I give it a readable. And if it's crap, it's a crap. So uh, we'll get right into it with uh, Batman 36. And uh, this was great. I, I give it a great. This I I didn't care that much for the annual. A lot of people liked it. I I thought it was okay. It just it it felt kind of eh, bah. It didn't do much for me, but I. I love Batman 36. It was funny. It was cool. Uh, I love how he handled uh, Tom King handled Superman and Batman. It was really good. Uh, I'm loving uh, the Batman and Superman book. Are, are probably like my two favorite books right now. So, uh, Justice League 34. This was readable. I'm really. Lately, the Justice League book from since Rebirth, it just feels like it's just these like weird sci-fi tales, and it's not really Justice League. There's no big over-the-top villain that I love, and no, it just feels like oh, what was that sci-fi movie? Uh, Arrival, The Arrival, like something like that. Everything in Justice League lately has been like that. It's I'm just not into it. It's not what I want from Justice League. I give it a readable. This could pick up. This was the first issue of Christopher Priest's arc, and I like Christopher Priest. It's just... I don't know. I just haven't cared for Batman that much, or Justice League that much, uh, since Rebirth, and it's just been kind of blah, and this was kind of blah. Superman, 36. Great. This was great. I love the ending. Oh, man, I love the ending to this so much. So, yeah, I... I, again, Batman and Superman, they're top top tier books right now. Uh, Venom Incorporated Alpha 1. This was good. I was really shocked. Art really, really helps me. The art is awesome. But yeah, this was good. Uh, I'm kind of, this could be a cool story arc. Uh, there's a crossover with Amazing Spider-Man and a Venom. Uh, and this was like the first issue of it. If the first issue is any indication, this is going to be a great story arc. If Dan Slott doesn't, uh, you know, throw in a bunch of uh, feminist t-shirts and stupidness, uh, this could be great, you know. But, you know, we'll see if Dan Slott is involved. So, you know, I, I don't think I've ever really, really liked anything Dan Slott's ever done. I mean, even when people were like, oh, is she all, I never cared for it. So, I've never been a Dan Slott fan, ever. Astonishing X-Men 6. I like the story. Can I, I'm going to say that I, I like this arc. I didn't, the thing I hated about this issue is that it's the last issue in a six issue storyline and there's a new artist on it. And I did not like his art. It's that painted style, kind of like that fake Alec Ross kind of rip off style and there's no backgrounds it's like almost everything's a white screen and uh that just it really bugged me i just uh, i bet you 90 percent of the art in this book has no backgrounds it's almost all just like just a yellow or white behind them and, and it bugs me so yeah i gave it a good it would have been it probably would have got a great if it had the original artist has started i mean if you start with the artist you should at least finish the arc i'm sorry you know i mean i i just i, I think it just bugs me when they change the artists in the middle of the story it does i don't like it avengers 674 this is crap i just it felt like nothing i it just there's nothing to it i i there's a death that I didn't give a shit about and uh, it's done so cheesily that uh, yeah I, I just I, this book just seems like nothing eh? I don't really care for it the ending of this book is just like boom it's like what that's that's where it ends huh yeah I Mark Way's lost it I don't know man because he used to be great man 
His Justice League run was awesome. His Flash run was awesome. His old Captain America run was awesome. But now, man, he has just lost it. Bane Conquest, number eight. This is old school comics. It reminds me so much of the 90s. Uh, that's good. I have to say, I really like Bane Conquest. Uh, it's fun. It reminds me of the old 80s stuff or 90s stuff. And, you know, I find it enjoyable. At least it's a comic, you know. Like, it's, it's not a propaganda piece. It's not a, there's no agenda here. It's just entertaining, you know, characters. You know, and they talk about all this diversity stuff, man. Bane doesn't get as much credit for being such a cool Hispanic character, you know. I mean, think of, I mean, I don't think I could think of even a cooler Hispanic character than Bane. I mean, he's probably the, one of the baddest dudes around. I mean, he broke Batman's back. I mean, I'll never forget reading uh, Night Falls and seeing that. It was just such a cool image. But, yeah, it's it's good. If you like old school stuff, you'd probably like it. If you don't, you wouldn't like it. You know, that's White Knight Three. And this is very SDW, and uh, it's okay. I mean, I like it. It's good. It's it's SDW, and I hate SDWs. So I'm kind of torn because it's so well written and very well, you know, drawn, and it's a quality book. I mean, SDW done as good as you can do SCW then you Batman White Knight is but I could not give it a good because it is good it's just a little on the left for me Captain America 696 this is like reading air there's nothing to this book I there's no there's no drama there's no excitement there's no anything it's just blah it's just blah I Mark Wade is just like dead inside. Like, did someone steal your soul, dude? Did someone suck your soul out of your body? Because I feel like you just don't care. And this book's just indication that if this is you trying, man, dude, you're dead. You need to take a year or two off, maybe, like, find yourself or something, man, and figure out, man, maybe just burn out. I don't know, man, but you should be writing, dude, because this stuff is terrible. Like, you used to be good. There's something wrong with you, dude. You need to take some time off. Seriously, you definitely. Mark Wade should take some time off. He doesn't need to be writing. This is this is not good stuff. This is just bad. Eh. I give it a crap. And there's another thing that's bothering me about this Captain America book. Because he's got Cap going across country and middle America and stuff. Like, do you understand that... Like, like America's America. I know you think like if you don't live in New York or California, we're all like hillbilly Nazi rednecks, but we're just like whatever you got in California or New York, we have it. You know, it's not like we're in nineteen eighties. You always you always write characters in the middle of America like they're from the fifties. Like we're so hillbilly backwoods. It's it's not like that, dude. It's, it's just anything you guys got, we got it. You just we just don't have as much. We're not, you know. There's not as many people. There's not as many stores, you know. But we still have the same stuff, and we we don't act different. I mean, if Captain America came to a small town, they're not gonna change the name of the fucking town to Captain America because he came to town, you know. Just like New York or L.A., you know, our towns have means. Nobody's just gonna change the name like it doesn't matter. Because, I mean, it does, obviously. I mean, I'm going to have to change the name of my, my driver's license and everything else. Everybody's going to have to change all that. So nobody's going to be like, oh, I want to change the name of the town to Robert Downey Juniorville because Robert Downey Juniorville had coffee here. No, we're not. You think we're that, like, insane that we're celebrities? That's you, dude. We don't give a shit. We don't give a shit, man. Like, to tell you a true story... One time, my buddy set his cigarettes on the counter at a bar, and Brent Michaels was there, and he picked up my buddy's cigarettes and signed them, thinking that he wanted an autograph, and my buddy grabbed the cigarettes, like, why'd you do that? Because he didn't ask for an autograph, he just set them down on the counter, and he just picked them up and signed them, and my buddy's like, why'd you do that, dude? Now I gotta throw my cigarette pack away and put all my cigarettes in my pocket. And Brett Michaels was just, like, shocked that he didn't want his autograph, you know? That, I mean, we don't care. In middle America, we really don't give a shit about you people. Celebrities that you think we worship and we go crazy for. No, we don't care. We don't. They don't excite us like you think they do. It's not that exciting. I can give a shit. 
Dastardly and Motley, number four. This was okay. This was good. I give it a good. I like Garth Ennis. It's not his best work, but it's it, it's fun. It, you know, it's fun. I, I enjoyed the characters from Wacky Races back when I was a kid. And I really loved, loved the Wacky Raceland story, the Hanna-Barbera DC comic. That was great. But yeah, I like this. It was good. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 148. I give this a readable. It's okay. It's not special. It's, it's not bad. It's just... I just feel like the storyline's just been going and going. Hopefully it'll get somewhere. But, uh... We'll see. Hawkeye, number 13. This is crap. Oh my god, dude. This is horrible. This, this book is just so bad, dude. I hate Kelly Thompson's writing. Oh, it's so bad. It's so oh, cringy and nauseating. And... Hawkeye, Clint Barton's in this, so we get constant. The other Hawkeye, I'm the real Hawkeye, you know, and all this book does is, like, make him the doofus. Like, he gets captured, and she's, just, like, gotta save him, and, like, he's just sitting there talking at the dinner table, and she's like, go make it to me if you're trying to kill this move. She's gotta move him so he doesn't get killed. It's like, dude, he was an adventurer. You really think that, yeah, this girl's all of a sudden, Ten times better than him. I mean, why was he a Avenger then? If he's this crappy, like I don't get this whole. We got to build up our diverse characters by destroying the old characters. This is stupid. It's just stupid reasoning. She should just have a different name and be whatever she is. Why well, make her Hawkeye? She's not Hawkeye. And then you constantly have to say the other Hawkeye, Badmouth Clint Barton. It's just dumb. It doesn't make any sense. I, I despise Kelly Thompson. Oh, I just everything she stands for. Oh, it's just she's just a terrible piece of crap. Iron Fist number seventy five. This is great. This is what Marvel should be doing. The art's great. The story's great. Sabretooth is in. It, it's great. And yeah, this was it had a cool ending. And I'm really excited about that. Ah, uh, this is a cool book. I, I mean, I can't recommend Iron Fist 75 enough, man. This is just awesome. This is this and Cable are the only really... And, you know, Venom. Venom's been all right. But, yeah. And, and so Iron Man Fist 75 gets great. Spirits of Vengeance 3 gets a good. This is pretty solid comic. Um, if you like to you want a dark Marvel book, this is kind of back to that. And I, I enjoyed this. Uh, they have a few good things there, but it's all buried. It's not mainstream stuff like Spider-Man should be good, Captain America should be good, Iron Man should be good, and those books are terrible. Thor should be good, it's terrible. You know, Miss Marvel should be good, it's terrible. Captain Marvel should be good, it's terrible. No, I, Hawkeye should be good, it's terrible. The books that are good are books that, you know, probably didn't always used to be that good. Spirits of Vengeance, Iron Fist, Venom. I mean, these are the books that are really good right now. Cable, but yeah, that's... I didn't read Iceman 8. Uh, I just couldn't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just waiting for, like, the butt fuck scene. Because, I mean, you know it's coming. You know there's going to be a butt fuck scene. Uh, Spider Man 235. This was readable. It's just blah. I feel like it's so mild and so blah. And not, you know. His vials is just, uh, Miles Morales and I'm Spider Man. It's just stupid. Now this whole thing where he's got this whole thing going on where he doesn't really want to be Spider-Man, so he's not wearing the costume, and it, it's, it, it, what? You, well, I mean, why is it two Spider-Mans? Anyways, it doesn't even make any sense. It's so stupid. Like, do you, if anybody can be these characters, then these characters aren't special. You know, you telling us that anybody can be Spider-Man makes Spider-Man really not that exciting. I know why you do it, because you want everybody to feel like they can be Spider-Man. But guess what? If you get bitten by a radioactive spider, you're probably going to get cancer and die. So nobody can be Spider-Man, because it's not real. It's not a fiction. So let's just have fun with it, instead of this whole, anybody can be anybody. It's stupid. It ruins the characters. It's one of the reasons your company's falling. It's because anybody can be anybody. So what's it matter? Why should I give a shit? It's like 90% of Marvel right now is the problem with them is, why should I give a shit? If anybody can be Thor, why should I give a shit? X-Men Gold 17. It's readable. Eh, I, I don't know. 
No, eh, he's okay, I mean, but this book hasn't been very good, man. For this big relaunch, and I'm sure they're paying him a big money. I mean, he's doing all those stupid uh, CW shows, so I'm sure he makes pretty good money uh, writing X-Men Gold, which he doesn't really seem like he even tries very hard, because this book is just boring. I didn't... It's okay, but it's there's nothing really exciting at all in this. I mean, Astonishing was way better, except for the art. I hated the art, so, you know. Uh... Was there anything great this week? Yeah. Iron Fist was great. Batman was great. Superman was great. Uh, those are all, like, I, and yeah, I've been, even Venom, uh, Ink Alpha was kind of, it was about as cool as a Spider-Man's been in 10 years, so, I mean, just to see cool art and Spider-Man and, I don't know, it's probably worth a pick, you know, but man, dude. Marvel sucks hard. Legacy has been a real downer. I mean, like, if you look at the books, they're doing well for them, or, or at least good, or, you know, the B-budget characters. And the only reason those are probably doing all right is, you know, are written well is because they don't really care. Or not that many people know Cable, so they don't have to change Cable to a woman. Because nobody, you know, he's not a huge popular character. Same with, you know, they don't have to mess with him. The B characters are a little safer than the the, the top characters because they've all been destroyed in Marvel. Like I mean, Avengers is a terrible book, Batman or Captain America's a terrible book, Iron Man's a terrible book, Spider Man's a terrible book. Yeah, I mean, if you think any A list or Iron Man, their books are trash because they had to be redone in SDW and anybody can be them. And then and once anybody can be them, then it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, that's really, you know, if, if anybody can be Captain America, then why would I give a shit? You know, if anybody, you know, if, if, when you have too many of them, too, like two Hulks or ten Wolverines, again, why would I care? 